Welcome to Handcrafting Your Retirement with Brett Ramsey from Artisan Wealth Strategies. In this podcast, we help retirees as well as those who are considering retirement overcome generic wealth management advice that limits your future. We do this by handcrafting customized financial strategies centered on your unique lifestyle. Jump on board for this journey where we delve into strategies that can help make your money outlast you as Brett draws from years of experience with guest experts to eliminate cookie cutter saving strategies. Hello and welcome to Handcrafting Your Retirement with your host, Brett Ramsey, where we talk about what you want in retirement and how to make it happen. I'm Wendy McConnell. Well, Brett, do you have one of those nifty stories to start off with today? I have absolutely a nifty story to start off with today, right? Because I'm just living this story right now. And it hit me as I was living out this story because, you know, I'd sent you a message right before we started recording that I might be late, right? And um, I really think that the reason why I might be late is really, really related to a little bit, not only of what Kim does for a living, but also her story. And that's why I think this is a great, a great little way, because I think a lot of people have experienced this. And I think almost everyone's experienced this and that uneasiness that comes from the feeling I had this morning is the feeling I think a lot of people have as they make some of the decisions that Kim's facing in her, in her, in her journey. So this morning, like out of nowhere, I've got a plan. I have a, a Wednesday morning routine that I go through and then boom, I, I pull back into the house uh, after my, my morning routine and I get ready to take my shower and I got this text message from my wife. <laughs> And it's laid out this assignment for me of things that I'm supposed to do that I didn't know I was supposed to do, right? So I wasn't really ready for it. I wasn't prepared for it. And it immediately threw me into a bit of a of a, of a tailspin, right? Because I, I really like to know kind of what's coming, what's coming up. And uh, so all of a sudden... Uh, it's part of it, right? And it's just how I'm wired. Like uh, there's this book I read when I was in my early 20s. It talks about begin with the end in mind. And that's just always stuck with me. So I really kind of like to have a vision of what's coming. And I know that the steps on the road aren't always exactly going to be exactly what I thought they were going to be. But it's most of the time, I pretty much know where I'm going, right? Like I, I'm not someone who has a problem with that. So the whole morning as I'm trying to deal with this and then communicate with my wife and my son and get it all sorted out, I just got this uneasiness in my in my stomach, right? I've just got this anxiety around, I'm going to be late right? I've got this 11 o'clock meeting. I've got this thing that I've got to do. I need to prepare for it. I'd built in time this morning to handle that, to read through my notes, to prepare, do all those things. All of a sudden I just got thrown right out the window, right? Just isn't going to happen that way. And I'm literally sitting in this lobby of this doctor's office, uncertain. And then I found out that there was like literally this mountain of paperwork that my son was supposed to do before we got there. And I didn't know, and so my wife literally handed him the paperwork as we entered the vehicle to drive to this appointment. And my son doesn't know how to fill out the paperwork. So he's asking me questions. I don't know the answers to because I wasn't prepared to answer. them. And I'm not blaming anybody for these things, but this is kind of how life happens. Sometimes there's just things that we can't perfectly anticipate things that we can't perfectly know exactly how to be ready for. And it creates this feeling inside of a little bit of anger sometimes, a little anxiety, a little uncertainty. And I'm living it out today, right? So I'm walking into this thing. And so then my head's spinning. My my focus isn't where exactly where I want it to be. And, and I just think that's a, a lot of people have days like that. And, and quite frankly, I know a lot of people kind of have lives like that where things just aren't always exactly going exactly the way that they had probably thought they were going to go. And then they get to this stage of life that we call like retirement or pre-retirement. And all of a sudden things aren't exactly how we thought they were going to be, but we are where we are. And the other day I was told, I said something profound. Someone asked me a question. I said, well, it will be what it will be. And I need to let go of, of worrying about it. I can't control that right? That's beyond my ability to control. There are things I can, but that wasn't one of them. I was like, so I got to let that go. And this young lady looked at me, she goes, man, that's deep. 
And I'm like, well, I didn't mean it to be deep. I didn't mean it to be anything more than how I try to process things that are sometimes out of my control. And our, our guest today, I think, has had some things happen in her life that weren't exactly on her master plan, that weren't exactly on her list of to-dos, that w- weren't just like this thing. But she's navigated it, and she's gotten herself into a place where she's going to be able to to handle it, make good choices, move forward in a, in a positive way. And, and I just, uh, I'm excited for you to hear her story and her journey and how she kind of went about a few things. Cause I think quite frankly, she's probably like you, right. Or like me this morning, like where things weren't exactly running the way I wanted them to run. And then things were a little off kilter. So with that, I, I'd like to introduce Kim and just have her kind of tell us a little bit about her background, uh, a little bit of what she does. Cause I think that's pretty cool too. Um, she's got kind of a neat, neat profession. And, and with that, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. I am a nurse practitioner. I work um, with OB and GYN patients. I've been doing that my entire professional career, pretty much and have really enjoyed it. I felt really blessed to be able to have a job that I love going to every day. So that's been a real security in my life. I'm still working. I've cut down to part-time, and so that's been a journey. But I've also been a mom, and I'm now a grandmother of four grandsons, a couple of which actually live with me. I'm still working at the parenting stage of life as well. And, and we're going to dig into a few of those things that you talked about, because like I said, I I think your story is I've met a lot of ladies like you, right. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, things, uh, probably, you know, if we, if we went back, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years, would you have said that this is how it was going to look for you? Not at all. (laughs) No. right. Oh, no. I remember those days when I would look forward to talking about retirement and thinking, oh, boy, maybe that'll be in Florida, you know, and I'll be enjoying that life there or something. But yeah, no, this is a pretty much a surprise. Right. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about that, because when we first met, you actually made a decision that I, I think was a really a bold one that a lot of people won't make is that you actually came to a class that I was teaching about retirement. So maybe Hmm. tell us just a little bit about like, why did you decide to come to that class? And if I remember correctly, you came to that class with another lady and, and she was kind of encouraging you and and maybe just tell us that whole dynamic and story. Yeah. So back in my married life, I was married to a financial analyst. And so we had conversations about the finances and I knew a little bit about retirement uh, savings and that sort of thing. But when it got to the point where I actually thought retirement was in my future, because I would say up until the point where I came to the class, Brett, I didn't really think about it very much. I knew that I was saving. I felt secure in that part. Didn't really know, you know, how much or what that would all mean when retirement actually came. But in about my mid fifties, then I thought, hmm retirement really is at the end of this road. And I really need to maybe give it some thought. And am I doing everything that I need to? So when I got this brochure in the mail that said there was this retirement class and it kind of had an outline and such, I'm not remembering all of it exactly, but I thought it sounded very interesting. And I did call a friend and say, Hey, we're getting close here. Let's go take this class and see what it has to tell us. You know, what don't we know at this point? Right. And so I just, so many people won't like educate themselves. And so I I think that that's just a big part of it, right? Like, is it sometimes I used to have a great mentor in my life and he says, Hey, we don't know what we don't know. And so if we, first thing we got to do is no. Right. And so I try to tell people that all the time is don't just trust me. Right. Let's, let's know let's, let's, and sometimes we have to talk about that. We have to close the knowing gap, right? The first thing is we don't know. Next thing is the doing gap. And that's a little different. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but I think it's also kind of important is like the bring a friend idea, right? So just, you know, like, you know, uh, being what I call maybe newly single or, or life change event there and finding people that you can kind of go down the road with and share the experiences with a little bit. How how important was that to you just in the confidence then to, to try something new? Without a doubt. I think I probably would have come to the class by myself because I really wanted to educate myself, but it was 
fun and it was enjoyable and it was um, comforting to have a friend there with me. And so I'm, I'm glad that that did happen. Right. You use the word fun, right? Which I think is an exciting use of a word that you picked there. And, and I know that mo some, most of our clients have been through some educational event with me, but for people that are new listening and learning, hopefully it was a six hour class and she used the word fun folks. I did not put that word in her mouth. I just want to put that out there. It's like, you know, that learning about something that, that is new that I would call as a traditionally like a, a boring topic, right? It's, it's, it can be a lot of math and stuff that people try to do. We don't try to do that, right? What we try to do is make it about the key human decisions that you have to make. And, and, and that's where I think for you, after we got to know each other, there's been some, some big decisions that you've had to make and, and kind of the one that, that I wanted to kind of think about, like when we first started talking, I know you were like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And there's some family dynamics there and, and not to get into all the, the weeds of that, but just talk us through a little bit about how hard it is, like parenting adults with kids and stuff and some of the the things that you end up kind of getting involved in because I know a lot of parents slash grandparents that are involved in a lot of the same kind of decisions that you are and I think hearing about how that impacted some of your choices like and just thinking through that I think that would be great to hear a little bit more about that yeah so I have like I said four grandchildren and two of them came to me together at the point at which their mom my daughter couldn't take care of them um, I got one when he was four years old and one when he was eight months old and at the time we were hoping that they would be able to get back to their um, mom but that didn't work out and so I have a great son who he and I together decided we weren't ready to take them on as adoptive uh, children, but we fought, we became guardians of them. And so I was working with my son, who those were not his kids, they were my daughter's kids. And so those decisions in that uh, process were challenging because I had to go through my son um, in order to make decisions for those kids as well. But as it's turned out, he actually took them at some point in his life. He was ready and he wanted to take them away from me so I could live my life. And he took them and parented them for many years. And here we are today. Uh, the oldest child came back to live with me a couple of years ago. And the middle child is here as of about a week ago. I'm not sure, Brett, you even knew that. Hey, that's um, new news to me. But yeah, we're good. right. So... Um, yeah, those were challenging times to be the grandparent and to figure out which hat to wear, grandparent hat, parent hat, guardian hat, and plus, you know, be the mom to my son as well. Right. No, and and and, and I think that hearing that can help so many people know that, that this is family life, right? This yeah. is, you know, it isn't all like, uh, you know, a Disney movie, right? Sometimes there are things that happen that once again, when we love people and we care about them, doesn't always happen exactly the way we planned for them, which means we have to make decisions in our life. And so, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of clients and I mean, and I'm talking about a lot, not like one or two, many, and they always ask me the same question. They go, Brett, what are the things that can, I'm going to use the word derail or make my retirement not go how I want it to. And I go, well, it's your family. <laughs> and, and you're laughing because I know we've had this conversation, <laughs> right? You know, it's some version yeah. of it. Right. And mm -hmm. they're like, what do you mean? It's my family. I'm like, well, it's your kids and your kids, kids. And in some cases now it's my kids, kids, kids. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you right now is that I know you and you care deeply for these people and they're going to make decisions and you're going to be involved in them, right? In some way, shape or form and trying to figure out, and it's not always just the financial support of them. Sometimes it's the emotional support. Sometimes it's what you're doing is, is, you know, s stepping into a gap at different times and providing support in, in, in physical ways, right. Uh, whether it's a place to yes. stay, whether it's a car or a ride or 
I know you've gone to a bunch of games and supported, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, athletes in fields and stuff like that. And I've got so many clients that are living through that same thing. And they're really, I don't want to say struggling with, but it creates a new friction or dynamic on your decision to retire, right? Because you're, you're not really strictly dealing with just your own stuff. So I just Absolutely. appreciate you being willing to talk about that because I just don't think you're, you're not alone in that, right? Like, I mean, that is a very, very common discussion that we have around here and, and it impacts something. So let's talk a little bit because it impacts what I call where you live. And what most people don't know is the where you live actually still accounts, even if your home is paid off for about a third of your expenses in retirement. I can get into more detail around what that means. But just tell me, you know, when you're kind of enmeshed in these lives of, of folks, how do you how do you make that choice about where you live and, and, and that kind of stuff? Just tell me about you and how you've done that. So I lived in my own home on um, the east side of Indianapolis while my son took the two boys and moved up to um, the northern um, side of town. And I got this epiphany at one point and thought, well, if I'm ever going to retire, I want to downsize enough so that I have a small place closer to them and I don't have as much responsibility um, in taking care of a home and such. So I moved up there closer to them to a small, it's a two bedroom condo, even though they tell me it's not really a condo. I'm not sure what to call it, but uh, it was the best decision I ever made to be honest with you, because it's so comfortable for me now to have help with taking care of my home, the outside of the home, the yard work and, and painting and all that stuff. And just have the inside to worry about. It's a small place. It's very compact but it's very comfortable. So where I live made a big difference. And it freed up some of your time is right. You know I mean? Cause yeah. you know, people just, you know, you rattled off a bunch of things that homeowners have to deal with. Right. And you either pay somebody to do it, which is an expense, or you have to do it with your own time. And, and I think when we're, when we're looking at this key point of life, I can't stress as how much the time trade-off is real. And I think most people know my story is my youngest actually went away to boarding school very unexpectedly because of some athletic opportunities that came his way. And my wife and I sold our home two years ago and we joke, we live in a van down by the river. <laughs> and, uh, um, but everybody's like, why do you live in a van down by the river? And we don't, we live in a uh, equivalent of, uh, we renting it right now because we're not sure what we want to be when we grow up either. Right. In terms of where is everybody going to land? But what I want people to hear is like, okay, I made this trade off because of what was important to me. And, you know, so you said, Hey, what was important to me is I wanted to be near them. Right. I didn't want to yes. have to worry about caring for the outside of my home. So I made this choice. That was not necessarily a money choice strictly. Right. It was more about the the dynamics of the family and your time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously the money played a piece of that, but not, not the the ultimate one. Mm -mm. Right. And I, and I was having that conversation just this week with another client and they were telling me about for them now that external maintenance is starting to become a problem. Right. And uh, there's some health of reasons for that, but it's not always that story is what I'm trying to get at. Right. And then you started that by saying, Hey, you know, I envisioned once upon a time living <laughs> in Florida. Right. And yeah. so not saying that you won't ever be in Florida, but right now, why are you not in Florida? Yeah, I just decided that, well, I guess I didn't decide. I still have to work. And so I am still working. And it was just wiser for me to stay here and and keep working and keep saving. And that I actually have put into the category of maybe I'll be able to go down there and do some winters and things like that, but not have a place down in Florida, which was my first thought. Right. Yeah. And and we can talk about how to finance that. So that's a great, great conversation for Kim and I to have in our next review, right? Is we actually have a lot of clients that'll do that. They've, I don't want to say given up, but they've started to realize that the, they don't really want to spend their whole year there. Yes. Right. And not exaggerating. Just had this conversation yesterday with a, with a, with a, a woman who lost her husband the kids are all grown and moved out. She's in her seventies now and she got a place in Florida and she's like, Oh, I'm just going to give up my place. Uh, you know, here in the Midwest, she lives in Ohio and she goes, I'm gonna give that up. And I'm just gonna go to Florida full time. And then she came back from Florida to her place in the Midwest. And she calls me and she's like, I'm not going to do that. She goes, I like it here. 
right yeah. and she was like why and I, said, and, and, and I go okay and she was like thought she was dropping some news bomb on me that like I was gonna be all upset about it and she's like and I'm like how you doing and she's like well this is just what I'm gonna do is you know that okay and I'm like I ask a simple question and, and I go are you broke and she goes well no you know I'm not broke and I said okay then I don't care <laughs> no, I'm not I, said, I, said, I said you know ultimately these decisions my job is just to give you the parameters around making them right but her having a place in Florida and a place here and renting one or spending part of the year there. I mean, that story is, like I said, not, not uncommon for us. We have a lot of clients that are facing that decision. And some of them, I always ask, and I say this, and I'll say this to Kim here. We, we haven't had that discussion much yet is I go, go try it for a bit, right? Yeah. Go, go try it and make sure you like it before you invest in a real estate transaction in Florida or wherever, Arizona or wherever you've been thinking about going, right? Um, Because you might find out that you don't like it as much as you think you're going to like it. And then, you know, or I miss all my relationships here. And so, you know, I think that that's a a good part of it. I'm going to switch gears here a little bit because you're actually doing something I call, you're actually kind of what I call trying retirement as opposed to going into it full speed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, we've talked about why a little bit, but you want to stay here. You're, you've got some family obligations that you're wanting to continue to support and take care of. We've talked a little bit about that. Well, let's just talk about how you're making the decision to kind of like go from working full time to, you know, I think you went down to four days a week, then you're at three days a week and and just talk us through that a little bit. How has that been? As you get older, you begin to think, hmm, perhaps I deserve not to work quite as hard. And so um, those thoughts started coming in to my brain. And I was trying to decide and think about, well, what can I do to make that happen? In my particular job, each day is pretty packed and full and busy. And so I knew that I couldn't really change that part of it, except if I weren't going to work every day. And I felt comfortable with my retirement plan that was in your hands and um, felt like, okay, if I don't have as many expenses as I had been having, um, maybe I can start to reduce my hours. And of course, in the healthcare profession, that is, at least as a nurse, you always have that option. It's always been an option to do weekends or part-time or nights only or that sort of thing. So I've been kind of used to that. And my employer and the department that I work for was very fine with me going down to the four days a week initially. And I really enjoyed that. It happened at a time when my oldest grandson was playing high school volleyball. And I knew that it was a very busy time and I wanted to be able to go to those games and enjoy them. And so I arranged it. So on the game days, I had the night off before that and um, it worked out really well. And since then, I decided I deserved a little bit more and um, could reduce down to three out three days a week. And in May of this year, I went down to three days, which is the minimum number of days I can work and still maintain that health care um, p- piece of it. And right. so that's probably where I'll be for a few more weeks to months. <laughs> right. And, and, and I just want everybody to hear that. Like, you know, like it wasn't like she communicated with her employer, right? They had discussions about it. She worked on her schedule, right? Like, you know, that's back to, you got to plan that out a little bit, right? Like if Mm -hmm. if it's an idea, you know, that one you, what I call is you can't just sneak up on it, on it. You got to kind of go in there and, and open that dialogue and, and be prepared sometimes for the employer, not always being like originally responsive. But, you know, what I try to tell most people is that when you're at this stage of your career, and you've been working somewhere for, I'm going to go with a reasonably long time, you're respected, right? Um, Most, uh, that's just not an accident. You've earned that respect. People value what you bring to your, you know, your employment and being open about, hey, you know, I, I want to make some changes. When you're respected, that usually goes pretty well for most people right? We don't hear a lot of people that have had this conversation with their employers and it's gone horribly, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once again, we're not talking about 20, 
two-year-olds that are in their first job. We're talking about <laughs> seasoned professionals or, or that have a career path that have been adding value to their their company or their employer for a long time. But sometimes people are just afraid to have that conversation, right? And they don't, they're like, oh, well, they'll never go for that. Well, how do you know if you don't throw it out there, right? And and give it a go. Now, and I think some people are like, oh, well, her, her circumstances are, are unique or special. Uh, no offense to you, Kim, but no, it's not. I f- <laughs> find that most of my clients that are willing to have that conversation, most of the time their employers make some form of accommodation to keep them there because they're valuable and respected. Yeah, I actually called the hum- the benefits department and I had a long conversation with someone and said, what does this look like? What does this mean? What what will that impact, you know? And at the end of our conversation, I remember asking her, okay, now tell me all the things I haven't asked you yet that I haven't, you know, even thought about. And so that was real helpful. Well, that that's good. So now you're, you're at three days a week, right? And yes. we've talked a little bit about that. So what are your big worries? What are the things that still kind of keep you with that <laughs> little bit of anxiety that, you know, and I know we have our frequent check-ins and, and one of the things that, that we do is a part of it. And I'll be very honest and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but sometimes my <laughs> job is just to kind of bring the anxiety level and to reaffirm and give you confidence that you're making good choices. You know, we talk it all the time you know, our little tagline now is, you know, is handcrafted for a confident retirement. So we're trying to help you be confident with your decisions. So, but what are those things that are still kind of gnawing at you or bugging you that you're still worried about a little bit? Well, honestly, at the end of our conversations, I always feel very confident, but at the beginning of those conversations, they usually start out with, I just can't even imagine that I'm going to have enough money and actually be able to stop working. I mean, that just is a concept that I have a hard time with even still. And you just have to remind me over and over again, here's the plan. Here's what it looks like. And then I, I regain that confidence. Sometimes in, in our, in between our meetings, I lose it again. And I think, Oh, I just don't see this happening. So my, my biggest, and I was chuckling even, you know, as I'm hearing you talk that I always have those thoughts about, I just don't have enough money to do it. Think about the budget, Um, the buckets, Kim, the buckets. I know. (laughs) And so that's the biggest one, Brett. That's honestly about what it is about for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been asked to speak many times and everybody's like, Brett, what's the top of your conversation? I'm like, well, usually I get three questions. And they're like, well, what are the three questions? I go, question number one is, do I have enough money? Yeah. And then they go, well, what's question number two? Are you really sure I have enough money? <laughs> and then and they go, well, what's question number three? Are you really, really sure that I have enough money before I retire? Right. Amen. So, uh, and and I, I know that we uh, sometimes gloss over that. You know, obviously we're trying to communicate different aspects of the retirement decision that people have to go through, but you know, what Kim's expressing, I do believe is the number one concern of most people when they show up at the class, when they decide to engage in a relationship is uh, with us as they're trying to figure out, do I really have enough money? And, you know, I like this stair step approach, right? This slowly making adjustments instead of just diving into the deep end. And it really makes a lot of sense to me in my own personal life. I I realized that once again, we were having a discussion before we came into our episode today is that my brain works a little different. Um, (laughs) I, I make decisions a little differently than most people. And that can get me, to be honest, that can get me personally in trouble, right? So I never ask my clients to make decisions the way that I do, because I know you probably don't think the way that I do. And, and they're like, and so I'm a very data driven person. And once I have the data, I'm okay. And I can move forward. I don't have a lot of emotion around decision-making, right? It's just how I'm wired. Um, you want me in a crisis. Why? Cause I'm not going to get very emotional about it. Right. I'm going to be like, what is the information? Let's make a decision. Here we go. But that's not most people. What well, most people are, are living life a little bit like Kim is where, Hey, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of things that that move this around and I got to get comfortable with it. So I think this practicing it and slowly moving into it, if you have that option, I think is a huge thing. And the other thing, that, and, and I would kind of like to end with this, and this is a little bit of a harder thing and we don't know why, but we've looked across our client base. And, and the only way I can say it is we have a lot of single ladies. Hmm. Right. And I don't know what that is. They all have slightly different stories, but we have a lot of single lady clients that have come to us. And so really 
uh, want you to kind of maybe as a single lady, what are, what's that kind of like, it, it's not because you're a lady, but it's like, you know, you didn't start that way, right? You have this family and you've had this journey and those changes. Can you just kind of tell our, our listeners a little bit of like, what are some of the biggest challenges or things you kind of maybe had to get over that you kind of maybe then had to take ownership? You know, you'd mentioned your, your uh, ex-husband had certain skills and, and had things. And so you maybe weren't focusing on that earlier on in your, in your, your life, but you know, what are the biggest things that you've kind of had to really take ownership of uh, from that standpoint in this financial journey for you? You know, I think the biggest influence for me was the fact that taking care of my patients, I always try to do the best I could for them. And I was confident in that. And I knew I had that ability to do that. And in the rest of my life, I knew I had talents and I was secure in most of those talents. Financially was not a talent of mine. I, I was intelligent and I knew some things about it. And I wanted to be able to uh, feel good about that. And I try to seek out people who know things that I don't know. And I've always tried to do that and give up that. I, I never felt like I needed to know everything about everything. And so I think that was the best thing that I could have done is to, to look for somebody who made me feel confident in that area. And yeah, I mean, that's really how I got to you. And once I got there, I felt very comfortable and very secure in that. And, and here we are today. Yeah, no. Well, awesome. And I appreciate you so much coming in and kind of telling your story. Is there anything else you would like our listeners to know that you wish maybe you would have known before or that you know now that you could kind of give them that, like what I call that last word of wisdom? Well, you've shared a lot, right, yeah. of, of, of a great journey. And for some folks, the answer is like, you, you know, I hate to say this, she knows a lot now. <laughs> She's in a good spot. She's making good choices. And she has a very, very firm foundation to move forward financially, living the life as it is constructed now and is, is, you know, confident in that and knows what the the parameters are now, how to make decisions within kind of what the limits and the bounds are. And uh, so that, like I said, I can understand why you may not have something right there because you've gotten on top of your game over the last several years and, and you've made a lot of fantastic choices and, and are in a really good spot. So, um, you know, Wendy, that that's, that's Kim's story. Like yeah. I said, it's been a neat journey. I've loved being on it for the last several years with her and, I think there's some other folks out there that could really uh, benefit from taking similar steps in their life. Yeah. Kim, thank you so much for coming on today and, you know, being so welcome. with your story. We do appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So Brett, how can we get in touch with you? We have some more questions. You know, that interweb place is a great thing to go to, you know, at artisanwealthstrategies.com. You can find almost all the smart stuff out there. You can access my schedule. You can get on it directly from there and, and schedule some time with us to talk. And that's how it always starts, right? And we'd love to have you come to one of our classes. Uh, things are listed and posted on there, but really just starts with a conversation. We have to get to know you. And if we can get to know you, we can find out if we can help you. So that's, we want to get to know you. And Brett guarantees to bring the fun. I am not boring. <laughs> That is for sure. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Please like, follow, and share this podcast with your friends. Until next time, I'm Wendy McConnell. Thank you for listening to Handcrafting Your Retirement. Visit our website at www.artisanwealthstrategies.com or give us a call at 317-660-2855. And don't forget to click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Artisan Wealth Strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC.